Well, our top focus story tonight. After WhatsApp, now Twitter today has said it's concerned over the potential threat to freedom of expression with the new digital media rules. The government, in its response, has said social media sites should stop beating around the bush and comply with the law of the land instead of dictating terms to the world's largest democracy. Google Sundar Pichai has said that Google will comply, but an open internet is foundational. There is now a full-blown war of words between the IT ministry and social media giants, Facebook's WhatsApp and today Twitter. After telling WhatsApp not to be foolhardy, it's now told Twitter to stop beating around the bush and comply with the new IT rule. Twitter has hit out at what it calls intimidation tactics by the police. Three days ago, the police raided its offices. Shortly after the government objected to Twitter labeling this tweet by the BJP spokesperson Sambit Patra as manipulated. Separately, the government is also putting pressure on social media platforms to comply with its controversial rules which give officials a lot of power over how these firms handle content. In a strongly worded statement, Twitter today said to keep our service available, we will strive to comply with applicable law in India, but we will continue to be strictly guided by principles of transparency and protecting freedom of expression and privacy under the rule of law. And referring to the new rules, Twitter says, we plan to advocate for changes to elements of these regulations that inhibit free, open public conversation. In response, the IT ministry says Twitter seeks to undermine India's legal system. The only instance of scuttling free speech on Twitter is Twitter itself. People's accounts are suspended and tweets deleted arbitrarily without recourse. Twitter is just a social media platform. It has no locus in dictating India's legal policy framework. The Delhi police too hit back at Twitter. They said, prima facie, statements are mendacious and designed to impede a lawful inquiry. Twitter investigated, arrived at a conclusion, it must share that information with the police. Facebook and Google had already said that they aim to comply with most of the guidelines. However, Sundar Pichai, Google's chief, spoke about what he called information regulation in India, underscoring that, we always respect local laws in every country we operate in. A free and open internet is foundational. We are very clear about the values of a free and open internet. Facebook-owned WhatsApp has already gone to the court against the new rules. Government also wishes to emphatically assure that representatives of social media companies, including Twitter, are and will always remain safe in India and there is no threat to their personal safety and security. However, the government also said that it emphatically assures social media companies, including Twitter, that their representatives will always remain safe in India and there is no threat to their personal safety and security. Though the IT guidelines do have a compliance officer clause who is legally liable for the platform. With Akhilesh Sarma, Rubina Mungia for NDTV. While the conversation around the new social media rules continues, the centre has also asked OTT and digital media platforms to give details on the compliance with the new rules in 15 days. INB Ministry has asked all digital news platforms and OTT platforms to furnish these details in the next 15 days under the new IT rules. While the government continues to fight social media giants over the new rules, the pandemic in India has seen a dip in cases but is far from over. Cases have seen a decline but the average daily deaths remain above the 4,000 mark. Cases in the last 24 hours are up by 2,11,298. That's a percentage point up from the previous 24 hours. Deaths are down by almost 7.5%, uh, down to 3,847. Tests in the last 24 hours are also down by 3% to over 21.5 lakh tests conducted. Positivity rate in India has dropped below 10%. It is at 9.79%. Vaccinations are down in the last 24 hours, also by 7.5%. To only 18,85,000 Indians were vaccinated. Have the COVID-19 deaths in the second wave peaked? Well, there appears to be a two-week lag between the peak and average number of cases and deaths. The average cases peaked in India on the 9th of May. Deaths now seem to have peaked on the 24th of May. Now, the government says that there is a decrease in positivity rate in the last 24 hours and the cases continue to decline. There is pressure to unlock cities, at least where the positivity rate has dipped. But will it happen is the big question. The health ministry today has said that reopening will be cautious and that restrictions will be lifted, but systematically. The Maharashtra cabinet also met today to discuss the COVID lockdown and possible relaxations. Here's what was said. 
in addition to, of course, the other tools in operation, including testing and COVID-appropriate behavior and vaccination effort. But nonetheless, it is reassuring that we are on the down swing of the second wave, and we do believe and hope it will be sustained, and it will be sustained even when the restrictions are gently and systematically and cautiously opened up uh, as the time comes. Jillian Madhe positivity rate jasta hai. Ani ja Jillian Madhe khas karun jite positivity rate jasta hai, tite sahaj ke ki rugna dar wad sudha jasta hai. Ani tiya mule beds upalabdata ha sudha hai prashna tiya nimitta ni asto. And when lockdown is a general nikashasas, the bed is a positivity rate. The farm is a very good nikash. And the people who are in the lockdown are not Lockdown is a कंटिन्यू राहुल त्याचा मधी शिथिलता देने दिया ना रहे। Now under severe criticism for its vaccine policy, the central government today responded to claims that it had abandoned states and that it is not working enough to increase the production of vaccines in India. In a seven-point fact versus myths document on vaccines, the government says that it is engaged with global manufacturers but acknowledged that there is a limited supply. This fact check released by the government's information arm, the latest pushback from the center under fire for botching up India's vaccine drive. The Myths vs. Fact sheet authored by Dr. V.K. Paul from the Niti Aayog drew criticism for being creative with the facts. For instance, the government claimed that it had engaged with global manufacturers since 2020, while the facts suggest India only placed its first vaccine order in January 2021 nearly seven months after the rest of the world had gotten into the act. The government also claimed it had eased entry of foreign vaccines into India, while in fact it only cleared approvals last month, by which time most of the global vaccine makers had little stocks to offer. Dr. Paul, however, claims... Today we released uh, some clarity on some of the aspects that are in the public domain, and I hope that will help clear the air about how the government has been making efforts in reaching out to foreign manufacturers. Has been the fact check document drew criticism from the opposition. I was the first order of vaccines by the government of India placed in January 2021 when other countries began placing their orders in the summer of 2020. Why did our government export six crore vaccines between January and March 2021 while vaccinating only 3.5 crore Indians during the same period of time? But the center's latest fact check suggests that it still believes playing offense is the best form of defense. With Sunil Prabhu, Usama Shab for NDTV. Well, sources say that External Affairs Minister S. Shankar's visit to the United States is not just for vaccines, but also to look at uh, priority supply chains and raw materials for vaccines. Relevant ministries are involved in discussions with Pfizer too, say sources. The world's not going to be the same after the COVID, whenever that after is. You know, when times are good, you tend to see international relations as endless opportunities uh, sort of waiting to be exploited. Uh, okay, the key question, the number one question on everybody's mind today is COVID. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the worry which people have, and I've heard this expressed by many countries, uh, you know, do, do we have accessible, affordable, uh, you know, vaccines? Now, we can't have a world which is part vaccinated and part neglected because that world is not going to be safe. Uh, so how do we, you know, get through uh, the global challenges in a, in a global way? I, I think that's the big question. 
Now, Pfizer has told the government that its COVID-19 vaccine shows high effectiveness against the Indian dominant variant of the virus. Sources said that Pfizer also told government that uh, its vaccine has proven to be suitable for those above the age of 12 and can be stored for a month in cold storage facilities with a temperature range of 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The American pharma giant is in talks with the government over fast-track approval to roll out five crore doses between July and October 2021, provided they have protection from compensation claims in case of adverse events. Yes, we are engaged with Pfizer because they have indicated availability of certain amount of certain volume of vaccine. Similarly, yes, uh, uh, they have uh, requested indemnity to all the nations, including uh, the country of origin, of this US or for practically every country. और वो उनकी एक्सपेक्टेशन है कि लायबिलिटी को इंडेमिफाई किया जाए उसकी कुछ अपने तरीके से वो लीगल लैंग्वेज में उसको एक्सप्रेस करते हैं। We are examining this request and we will take decision in the larger interest of people and on merits. So this is under discussion, but there is no decision as of now. Now, interestingly, the government today has also said that it's looking to mix and match vaccine doses on a trial basis. And there is no concern if in any case people get different doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is what the top government's top advisor said today. After, remember, a group of villagers in Uttar Pradesh were accidentally administered a shot of Covishield first and then were given a follow-up dose of Covaxin. First of all, the protocol is हमें हमें सजग रहना है कि ऐसे नहीं हो, because that is how it should be. लेकिन फिर भी अगर ऐसे हो भी गया, ऐसे टेंड कर लीजिए, उस व्यक्ति को basically not to worry, क्योंकि अगर उस एंटीजन से इम्यूनिटी बनी, दूसरे से बनी, इतना कोई सिग्निफिकेंट इश्यू नहीं होना चाहिए। इस चीज को इन्फेक्ट एक्टिवली ट्रायल के तौर पे देखा जा रहा ह well, let's get you the big story. We're checking from Karnataka tonight. Now, Karnataka, remember, is hit with hundreds of cases of mucomycosis or the black fungus and is trying to change its approach to tackle this new challenge. The state has, uh, has endeavoured to stop the use of steroids in the first week of COVID-19 treatment and is also going to be screening patients before discharge and monitoring them later. Karnataka is changing the way it is tackling mucomycosis with respect to patient treatment and post-COVID monitoring. Steroids are to be avoided in the first week of treatment of a COVID patient. Before discharge, recovered patients will be screened for the black fungus with an MRI scan if needed. District hospitals will follow up on discharge patients to check for symptoms through a dedicated post-COVID ward where patients could come for checkups or through telemedicine consultation. With well over 400 confirmed cases in the state, the main drug for treatment, amphotericin B, is in high demand. Over 8,000 vials have been allocated to the state in the last week, and the government is also trying to source alternatives. We are following, following it up with the, already the people infected with the COVID-19 and ensuring the follow-up, the screening can happen in the initial levels. The alternative drugs are available even now. There are around 100 patients being treated for black fungus at the Bengaluru Medical College Hospital. Many more at other government and private hospitals. Uh, uh, while we don't have to scare people about mucar and black fungus, we also need to create awareness to ensure what we have seen in our, uh, in our setups. Number one is they've all been COVID positive. Number two, at some point, lot of them have been given steroids. The fourth is about 30 to 40 percent of them had given oxygen in some point, and lastly, none of them have been vaccinated. Another reminder that those who recover from COVID could still face serious health challenges, and that these new challenges need modified approaches. With DM Kumar, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV. Now, Prime Minister Modi will visit West Bengal and uh, Urissa tomorrow to take stock of the impact of Cyclone Yas, which, remember, affected one crore people and destroyed three lakh homes. Interestingly, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee will be meeting Prime Minister tomorrow to review 
the preparedness in the aftermath of the cyclone. Cyclone Yas that made landfall yesterday in Odisha is now a depression that continues to affect the states of Odisha, West Bengal and Charkhand. Over 100 millimeters of rainfall has been reported in areas of Diamond Harbour, Ranchi and Jamshedpur. A rain red alert warning has been issued for Bihar with an orange alert warning for adjoining areas. This weather system will move towards East Uttar Pradesh causing heavy rain over the next 36 hours. Odisha's Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik has announced a seven-day relief package for all families that have been marooned by this cyclone. That's 128 villages that were impacted by cyclone Yas. Vast areas of the entire district has received a maximum massive rainfall during the last three days. Around 122 villages have been marooned where uh, relief is for seven days is being extended as per the announcement by Honorable CM. So far we have not received uh, any information uh, on human casualty. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Odisha and West Bengal on Friday to take stock of the impact of Cyclone Yas, which has impacted one crore people and destroyed three lakh homes. This is Divya Wagba for NDTV. Well, on to the other big story we're tracking tonight. Fugitive diamond merchant Mehul Choksi, one of India's most wanted in connection with the PNB bank load uh, fraud case, has been captured from Dominica while trying to flee to Cuba. The 62-year-old had gone missing earlier uh, from Antigua, remember, where he had fled to back in 2018. His disappearance came amid efforts to extradite him by the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate, which are investigating the 14,000 crore rupee fraud. Sources said Mehul Choksi had reached Dominica, a tiny island nation by in the Caribbean by boat. And with a lookout notice uh, that has been issued against him, he was caught by the local police and is currently in their custody. The Antigua PM, very interestingly, has said that he will ask Indian authorities to deport him directly. We have requested Prime Minister Skerritt and law enforcement in Dominica not to return him to Antigua where he has legal and constitutional protection. In fact, we have requested specifically that he be detained and to allow law enforcement in India to make the necessary arrangements with the Dominican government to have Mr. Choksi uh, returned directly to India. And reacting to these developments, Mehul Choksi's lawyer has said that he can only be deported to Antigua. There is no question of him being sent back to India. Now, the Nifty gained for the fifth day in a row to close at an all-time high as daily COVID-19 cases in the country continue to fall. The Nifty ended at an all-time record high, closing at 15,338, up 36 points. Sensex climbed 98 points, closing at 51,115 points. In the May series, the Nifty has advanced nearly 3% and Sensex has gained nearly 2.7%. Now, at a time when the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic has started to recede in several parts of the country, here's a shocking case of violation of COVID-19 protocols that we're tracking from Madhya Pradesh's Satna district, where used COVID-19 safety gears were allegedly being washed for resale and reuse purposes. A shocking violation of COVID protocol at this private biomedical disposal site in Madhya Pradesh's Satna district, 500 kilometers from Bhopal, where viral videos show stocks of previously used single-use PPE kits, masks and gloves being cleaned in hot water, allegedly for repackaging and resale. Biomedical waste from seven districts of the state, including Satna, is brought for disposal to this private plant, the Indo Water Bio Waste Disposal Plant. NDTV is also in possession of a letter 
which shows how this private company running the plant faced similar allegations last year too during the first wave of the covid pandemic ki pehle ye pata to lage ki kaun doshi hai kyunki pratham drishtya aapko ye to aaya nahi samne abhi ki kisne becha aur kisne kharida to ye sab to jaanch ka vishay hai pata lagega agar aisa ho na paya gaya to zarur ye gambhir baat hai aur is pe sakht karwai ho the plant has an operation since 2006 and the villagers also allege that the medical waste is not disposed as per the guidelines laid by the pollution control board hence putting their life in danger with gan shukla and satnan camera person rizwan khan in bhopal anurag dwari for ndtv